Meanwhile in Russia, July 2023. Among other current Russian news, I find these ones particularly interesting and worth sharing. Please check them out. Boost sales are down. Well, up. Shrinkflation. Triumphal return of Karl Marx to Russia. Commercial banks closing offices. Sharia banking introduced in Russia. And now it's official. Howdy howdy friends, my name is Konstantin and welcome to Inside Russia. Crazy news come out of Russia every single day. Without further ado, let me fill you in. Sales of vodka and cognac down big time. Official sales of vodka and cognac in Russia have fallen sharply, according to the new data released by Rostat, Russia's federal statistics agency, in the first half of 2023. The sales of vodka decreased by 16.4%, and cognac and brandy by whopping 20.3%. Hmm. First of all, it doesn't look like Russia. That's very strange news. Just recently, Rostat painted a completely different picture. At the end of last year, Rostat released the data that hard liquor sales were up big time. And now they are reporting that their sales have fallen sharply. But um, it actually does make sense if we take some things into consideration. Russians are quickly becoming poorer. So they start saving money on everything. You can save money on bread, on clothing, on gadgets, on other things, but not on booze. But if you drink, you drink. To save money, you downgrade. You used to drink the good stuff, but now you're forced to switch to cheaper crap. According to Nikolai Bispalov, a Russian alcohol market expert, well, it's nice to be an alcohol market expert, the drop in sales is explained by the growth of the illegal market. The explanation is simple. A number of foreign producers of high-quality alcohol left Russia. So wholesale suppliers began to replace them with counterfeit and with local black producers. Well, what is a black producer? One that is not on the radar of the government. No taxes, no licenses, and this is the most important, no safety regulations. Safety of such liquor is in question. I don't even mention quality of booze. So I think it's safe to say that Russians drink more and more, despite what Rothstadt says. And how can you stay sober anyway when this crap is happening in your country? Moving on. Russia's oil export revenues have almost halved. Just look at the dynamics of how the oil revenues have been falling. Take a very good look at it, as this is the picture of Russia's economic demise. Moving on. Shrinkflation. Do you know what shrinkflation is? Same product, same package, same price, usually food, but less of a product packaged. Shrinkflation is hitting Russia hard. It's so bad that even Russian politicians got concerned. Russian parliament senators announced seeing mass shrinkflation in grocery stores. One of the senators, Boris Chernyshov, acted as a mystery shopper and made control purchases in 122 grocery stores. Now, that's quite the news in itself. You usually don't see Russian senators work. Don't see them doing anything. And here... A senator went to 122 stores acting as a mystery shopper. I'm sure that his voters will be thrilled. But anyway, shrinkflation products have made up to 87% on average. The senators were very surprised with the results. Shrinkflation! Outrage! Well, my dear Russian senators, I have the news for you. Russian economy is the Titanic, full of water and already going down. And that's your deed. You approved all the laws, approved all the actions in Ukraine. This shrinkflation is your fault. It's good to know that now you know that it exists, you know that it's your fault. Moving on. 
Karl Marx is back with a big bang. A monument to Karl Marx is to be installed in Kazan, Tatarstan Republic. And the state is paying for the Karl Marx monument. Ha! Huh. And the announced price is 1.3 million rubles. Hey, Karl Marx isn't cheap, you know. I wonder, just wonder, if Chemnitz, a German city in Zexan, will be renamed back to Karl Marx Stadt. I mean, if Karl Marx monuments are back in Russia, perhaps Germans will be renaming Chemnitz back. Karl Marx Stadt, Karl Marx Stadt, du bist die Stadt Roter Blumen. Karl Marx Stadt, Karl Marx Stadt, aber ich mach nur weiß. Out of all crazy news, this crazy news is the craziest news. What is next? The monuments to Lenin coming to every Russian city again? Back? Or did I say Russian city? Ah, uh, my bad. Of course. Soviet city, not Russian city. We just need one, another one tiny law from the Russian senators and will be called the USSR all over again. By the way, if you liked me singing, please help me spread the message by making reposts on your social media accounts. And if you didn't like me singing, help me anyway. Thank you. Moving on. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a law that raises the age limit for men in military mobilization reserve by five years. Now, the age limit for privates is 55 years old. Age limit for junior officers, 60 years old. And for the senior officers, 65 years old. My dear Russian men, don't ever say, oh, it's not my fault. Or there's nothing I could do. You could and you didn't. And you'll pay the price. And most likely, the price will be your life. Moving on. In May of 2023, 191 branch offices of commercial banks closed in Russia. This is the largest reduction of commercial bank branch offices since 2022, according to statistics from uh, the central bank. Why would commercial banks would be closing their offices. There are two possible reasons behind that. First, decrease in demand. Fewer Russians need financial services, or rather can afford financial services. Second, the banks are cutting costs due to falling financial results. Commercial banks are a very important indicator of a state of economy. I have said multiple times that Russian commercial banks will be hit hard by a wave of both commercial and individual loan defaults. Central bank statistics are proving me right. Looks like the commercial banks know what's coming to them and taking measures before they're actually hit. Moving on. Mortgage interest rates will skyrocket soon. Average mortgage interest rate in Russia may rise up to 12% soon. That will lead to a decrease in the volume of mortgage issuance in the primary and secondary housing markets by 20%, according to the industry experts. This is majorly not good for Russian real estate market. New construction will be even more trouble. And the price of secondary real estate will be dropping. Why this will happen? Well, plain and simple. Russian Central Bank just increased the key interest rate to 8.5%, which is, in general, pretty bad for Russian economy. I explained the key interest rate hike in the previous. Meanwhile, in Russia, economic news editions, you check it out right here if you have not seen it. It's right there in the details. But we are moving on. Another news from Russia Central Bank. The newsmaker, Central Bank's head, Elvira Nabiulina, admitted the possibility of further increase of the key interest rate in the next meetings. Read between the lines. Very soon. For any economist, this situation is absolutely obvious. Central bank must increase the key rate to keep the inflation under control. 
but by increasing key interest rate gives another blow to already sinking economy. Remember what I've said before, Titanic's compartments are full of water and the ship is sinking. Moving on, wholesale gas prices at Russian Commodity Exchange set another record. I remind you, this is the 10th commodity exchange session gas price record in a row, which is a record in itself, as a result of the latest trading. Regular gas price has risen to 62.5 thousand rubles per ton, and the price of the premium has risen to 68.1 thousand rubles per ton. Record high gas prices come into the gas station near you hey this is what you get for attacking your neighbor folks if you liked what you just heard and asking yourself how can i help this channel that's easy the best way would be to hit the like button to buy me a coffee at buymecoffee.com or become channel's patron on patreon.com either way would be fantastic and much appreciated the links are down below thank you so much moving on Sharia banking has finally come to Russia. Russian parliament adopted a law on Islamic banking. The law stipulates that the experiment of Sharia compliant finance will last for two years from September 23 to September 25 in four Russia's republics, well, provinces, Bashkirastan, Tatarstan, Chechnya, and Dagestan. Islamic banking, also referred to as Islamic finance or Sharia compliant finance, love the name, Sharia compliant finance in Russia, refers to financial activities that adhere to Sharia, which is Islamic law. There are two fundamental principles of Islamic banking. They are the sharing of profit and loss and the prohibition of the collection and payment of interest by lenders and investors. So, the Sharia compliant banking is officially in Russia. You know, it'll be really interesting to find out how Sharia compliance departments of commercial banks participating in this thing will look like. What's next? Taliban becoming an official part of Russian government? Probably wouldn't surprise me now. And right now, I suggest you check out another video I made documenting how I was leaving Russia forever. The link is right here. Thank you.